We are going now to talk about Professor Jenna Naupokwazima's uh, story of what parents have told, what parents have told her about how they are struggling with free SHS. Let's see, uh, let's see that now. Uh, Good night, Metro TV, Facebook, we are on. Uh, let's see that uh, video of, uh, unless you have something to say, I want to show you what she says parents have been telling her and teachers have been telling her. Let's see that video. In implementation, and for you as uh, an academician who has seen teachers trained at the highest level, somebody who has um, headed a whole ministry, I'm sure you have silent voices within the Ghana Education Service or the Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary Schools and maybe NACA who may be involved in curriculum research and development and implementation. What have you been picking from people who cannot perhaps talk openly? Yeah, the major thing that disturbs them is, and I've picked from many. I've picked from students, I've picked from parents, I've picked from people in the ministry, outside of the ministry. I've many stories to tell. I don't know how long we have, others that I've told you one or two. No, at least one will not be. Yeah, so first, I want to finish and answer your question. And their major concern is that we can't speak, you know. So when they come and give me all these litany of complaints, my question is, but you have your boards, you have your committees. That's a proper channel. Why don't you send all these concerns there so they reach where they need to reach? They say, no, today we don't even know who to trust. You don't know who is listening to you. Uh, before you know, they transferred you. And I find that very, very unnecessary because it doesn't help anything. Okay, so as for the comments, many. A parent called me, said, I live in, let's say I live in Accra. My child has a day, has been posted to a day school in Suhum. What should I do? It was on the phone. I don't know who gave her my number. And I said, you know, I can't advise you, but I'll tell you what I will do. If I were in your position and I worked in Accra and my child has been put in a day school in Suhum, I've never lived there. I don't know anybody there. If I were you, two things. One, I'll leave my job in Accra, go and live in Suhum, rent the house and know where my child is so I can get him ready to go to school and come back. Because the child going to uh, the SHS is leaving home for the first time and needs some support. And at that stage, they are very vulnerable. And they are very vulnerable. OK, so I don't know about that person dealing with the landlord or any of those. So that's option one. If you cannot leave your job, then bring your child where you are and find a day school close to the premise and said well they said if you do that then you won't get the free and that uh, the whatever else and I said my sister so what is you make a, a choice then you know the decision is in your hands but this is what I would do I have two choices and if you want to push and ask me which of the choices I will not leave my job because so, how so, am I going to take care so of my it, child? So it gives a reflection of parents who have their own challenges regarding. So it means that. So it means that the parents have been having challenges. I don't know if there's space for them to express that challenge. When we were in the ministry, we put about is it five or six national service people. We created a hotline, and we advertised the hotline, and we asked any parent who has any challenge, teacher, whatever, just call us. And we also show the people where to take the complaints. Some of them will say, no, I want to talk to the minister. Two minutes, just talk to the person. Maybe you are not even the one to solve the problem. But listen, but if it's about intimidating the people and harassing them and so on, then they will not talk to you. OK, so this is what parents are telling the former minister and the running mate. Uh, I, I, I'm surprised that parents never told her anything good about free senior high school. Mm. Very much surprised. If you have parents talking to you truly, one of them will have told you that had it not been for free senior high school, my children would have been at home. So mm. if people are talking to you and everybody talking to you is about something negative, they, I don't know the kind of people who are talking to her. I would think that the former minister will say, a parent called me and said, I'm a taxi driver. I have two children in, free, uh, in senior high school, and I'm grateful to the president of the republic. Then in addition to that, you can say some negative things and complain. But for some reason, everybody who comes to talk to you has something negative to say about the free senior high. That is not what I'm getting. I went to a village in my constituency about six months ago. There was a major celebration because at that town called Eduabin, 
Every year it used to be that two people would graduate from high school. That year, 30 people graduated from high school. Those who had been at home for five years took advantage of Nanano Danko Kufuado's vision and, and actualization of free senior high school, and they went in their numbers, and the whole town jubilated and celebrated and thanked Nanano Danko Kufuado profusely. I hear that. But of course, I also can hear challenges, and I, when I hear challenges, I jump and solve them because I'm excited when parents give me opportunity to solve their problems. So to insinuate as if we don't care and she cares, and, and the fact that when parent calls, we intimidate them. Me, Dr. Duchum, intimidate is not even in my bone. It's not part of my well, DNA. Maybe the GES, maybe the system. To intimidate, but she is saying she will respond, mm -hmm. but we will intimidate as if the current minister will intimidate parents. But why they are you come to my office to whom when the person... I don't even understand the logic of it because in the first place, if you don't select that school as day, it, you won't be sent there as a day student. In oh, case, on the technical oh, selection? Yes, yes, yes. In case something happens, you know mm -hmm. this year, well, did you hear much noise about placement? What we did was that we opened the NAT hall mm -hmm. and we told the whole country that if you have any issues, come there. We opened hotlines about 30 hotlines were open to the entire country. In fact, we added another set of 30. So many people were on responding to concerns of parents. Anybody in that situation that he was referring to could have had situation resolved. I was at the call center. I went to the call center. I took calls from there. I remember solving the problem of a parent who called from Swedru. I personally called that parent back, took the number, I solved the problem of that parent on the phone right there at the call center. So what is Madame talking about? I'm a handsome minister. And I do so the this work. So the story is not true? This story I'm not is saying, not possible? I, I'm not saying it's not possible. But the solution is offered. is the solution of the elite like me who can afford to quit my job and go and live in Suhum because I'll be getting income. Mm. So... So, yes, to that parent... A factory worker cannot just leave. Leave my job and go and say, I'm so home because my child needs me. Needs me. How am I going to take care of that child? Mm. So, the bottom line is this. That can happen. But three senior high school coordinators are in every region. We empowered district directories of education to support. Mm -hmm. We created hotline for people to call in. So that situation like this can be solved. If unfortunately somebody's problem was not solved, he can call your station right now. Mm. And if it's an urgent situation, okay, where let's, the let's test it. Let's put the phone line on. Yeah, if the, uh, the, I, I want to hear from them. Mm. But the bottom line, my brother, yeah, yeah. is this. Um, it's very easy to talk about what you heard and what people are talking to you about. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that only negatives are the ones you hear. <laughs> I want her to one day get into Marcola Market and ask parents whose children are in free senior high school and ask them, would they rather take their children out um, because free senior high school is not good for them? And they will tell you, no way. My child is benefiting from the vision of Nanado Danko Kufuado and I'm going to put her in the school where she is. Uh, we can talk about instructional hours. You see, the, the premise of mm -hmm. this attack on WAIC mm -hmm. is that, and she started it, mm -hmm. that this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, therefore the results will not be good, right? Mm -hmm. So if she doesn't attack the results, she has no justification for oh, anything. Okay, there was that a build up to this. Oh, yes. Mm. Of course, we saw Joy News, mm -hmm. and she followed with this interview, yeah. making a case that the thing is so bad. But the point of the matter is this. The process is so bad, the outcome should be bad. Mm -hmm. If the process is bad, the outcome is good, you have to go and attack the outcome. Mm -hmm. The process was right. The president of the republic, for the first time in the history of this nation, made available intervention grants for mm -hmm. extra classes. Never happened before. Yes. He also directed that if you're going to do double track, make sure the students have more instructional hours. Mm -hmm. So instead of 1,080 hours before double track, it became 1,130. You can check the schedule. Yes, we reduce the number of days because in education, what we care about is instructional hours. 
so that we can have more students going to school. And then we be, when people talk about this, without looking at the context, the human beings who have been affected here, 400,000 more students have gotten the opportunity of secondary education, and you are not thanking President Anadu Danko Kufuado. I'll tell you, this man has done something, this president has done something so courageous, so unique, and those people in this country who have benefited from this program will forever remember mm. him. Mm. There may be some challenges, and yes, for any new program, there will be challenges. When we implemented the double track, the President of the Republic made a pledge to the good people of Ghana. I was there with him in Tamale. It was a very cool Tamale evening. Mm -hmm. and, and he made a promise that between five to seven years, I'll take our double track. As I speak with you, Prempe College doesn't have first year double track. Kumasi High School, no first year double track, no second year double track, third year is single track. Schools have taken advantages of the infrastructure that has been built for them and they are eliminating double track. And by the way, we start with about 60% of schools that are double, 40% of them were not double track. And more of the schools that were double track are moving into single track because of the infrastructure that has been built under the leadership of this president. I, I will say this, I have seen courage in action. Mm. President who is so courageous in the face of challenges. When the former minister for education and my good self I uh, met the president to brief him on double track. Double track. Any African president will have said, not under my watch. Go and put up some shelters and put the students in. Double track. What is double track? But the president said something profound. He said, if this policy that you're going to implement is the reason why a student in a, uh, in a village somewhere in the country will get the opportunity for secondary education, Go ahead and do it. I'll support you. He said that young man or woman at that village where nobody can even find on the map may be the one with a solution to the problems of this nation. Don't leave that child behind. And he said, I'll support you. Go and implement it. He forcefully defended it. And he, of course, I will say I respect him, but I respected him more from that day. Courage in the face of challenges. This president was doing something unique, and now the rest of the world is studying Ghana. The Brookings Institution did a study on Ghana and said, Ghana, the first country to have experimented with a situation that have turned out to be a blessing to its people by implementing double track, which they said is a leapfrogging strategy. Uh, a 50% growth in enrollment in secondary education in any country is a major leapfrogging strategy. Now there are countries in Africa that is looking at Ghana and saying, oh, we need to do the same because our building are there during the summer is dormant. Why don't we find a way to do what Ghana has done? The president has set a pace for Africa. Posterity will be kind to Nana Adodanko Kufuado.